I think all of those boxes are back up. That's amazing. This is our room. We're staying at the EB's Gaziantep. It looks similar to the hotel that we stayed in in Adana. It's the same brand. We've got the mirror here, bathroom here. It's a very tight space, but it has everything that we need. And then here we have a queen size bed. We have our TV that's much bigger than the one we actually had in Adana. And over here we have a small bench, a desk. Underneath the desk is a mini fridge. And we have a window overlooking the city. We're pretty central to everything, like the museum and the markets. Behind me is the safe coffee tea area and a little closet space where I already put my stuff there. So we're out now in Gaziantep and we're headed for dinner. We took a little break in the hotel, but now we're ready to go out and explore. Hopefully it doesn't rain because it looks a little cloudy. Just walking here in the street, you can smell all the food and it smells great. And Gaziantep is called the culinary capital of Turkey or or some people like to call it the stomach of turkey. So we're excited to try some of the food here. This is definitely the place to be and especially here with the castle and all the restaurants, it's definitely very busy here. We can get a table because it seems pretty busy. Get it. Yeah, so we weren't able to get a table. It's completely closed. Good morning. This is day two in Gaziantep. Yesterday we had to call it a night early because it started raining and we couldn't record. But today we're going to the museum, the castle and some other things. Hopefully get some food. Yeah, I want to get some food here in Gaziantep because they're known for their food and desserts. So we'll see you at the Mosaic Museum. So we made it to the Mosaic Museum and it is busy. There are a lot of tour groups here, but we're still going to enjoy because there's plenty to do here and to see. It's a pretty big museum. <laughs> a 15 minute walk turned into a 50 minute walk, so I'm tired. So I wanted to note that these mosaics are normally on the floor and so it's impressive how they've been able to showcase them here. And you can see how thick it is out here. So it's impressive that they've been able to Put these up here and you can actually touch and feel how smooth they are obviously after years of being worn down people stepping on them in just good time reminds me of the museum hotel but of course the museum hotel you can't get as close to them as you can here i think it's even more impressive that some of these are pool mosaics and so it'd be Interesting to see that these were actually underwater at some point. Now we're headed to see the most famous mosaic, which is the Gypsy Girl Mosaic. It is busy today, definitely a lot of people out here. I like how they make the mosaic of the Gypsy Girl its own exhibit, so you have to walk in through a dark room and um, there's a lot of people inside and everyone's trying to take pictures. So I'm glad we came to this museum because you get to experience some of the mosaics up close. My favorite ones to look at are the ones with people because you can see the detail in the different outlines of the body. So there's different colors to show the different curves of the body and it's crazy to see how much detail those actually have. Another very impressive thing is how they were able to transport all these from a site that's about an hour away, which um, they had to transport over here because after the creation of a dam, that entire place flooded and so some of those ruins are actually still underwater there, but they brought a big chunk of them over here. And so it's good that they were able to preserve them this much. So when you come in, all the main mosaics are on the left side of the building. But on the right side, there's far less people. You get to enjoy it a lot more quietly and just walk around calmly because there aren't huge groups of tourists trying to see everything and take selfies with everything. You know, that has attracted two suites and gift shops. So here we are. So we just went into the gift shop. They have different souvenirs like coasters, picture frames, and just different things that you can buy with the mosaics from the museum. The museum ticket is 50 there. I think it's worth it just because of the scale of this museum. There's two different areas that you can walk through and each area has three different levels. So there's a lot of mosaics to see and it's a good experience. 
we normally walk everywhere but because this city some of the parts are not as walkable we just decided to take a taxi there are those yellow boxes that you just press a button and a taxi will show up within a minute or two sometimes so they're pretty convenient we're talking about how last night the streets were packed and it's 10 30 in the morning and the streets are empty right now so now we're headed to the gaziantep castle i think the entrance is right over the corner so we'll be there in a bit The tickets were 10 lira each and if you're a student or a teacher you can get it for free. We tried paying with cash but we couldn't so they told us that we have a touchless card that we could just um, pay there in the turnstile. So pretty interesting. So while it was originally used as a fortress to defend Gaziantep, now it is essentially a military museum and it has great views of the city. It's quite a hike, but um, we'll be fine. It's good. You can see the mall near the hotel where we're staying at. You can see it from here. So we're walking through the inside of the fortress, and they have a ton of different exhibits that show you the history behind the war and what Gaziantep meant. I think it's good for you to learn some more of the history and just walk around here inside the fortress. So now we're out of sort of that tunnel that has some of the history, and we're going up to the terrace, which we expect will have the amazing view of the city. earlier we noticed the city logo it's interesting because it has the same silhouette as the castle itself this is a pretty extensive area because we're up here and it actually takes a while to walk entirely around and they even had their own hammam and the mosque so this is definitely a big fortress and a lot for you to see good bargain for the 10 turkish lira and if you're a student or a teacher even better because it's free behind me this is where the mosque would have been and we only see the bottom of the foundation. Behind me is where the hammam is, and you can see that there's different chambers. So after walking through the castle, we're definitely hungry, so we're gonna stop by the restaurant we tried to eat at last night. Hopefully it's open and it's not as busy as it was yesterday, because we heard it's really good and we want to try it out. So it seems like we're in luck and it is open. Let's see what type of food we want to eat here. I think all of those boxes are back up. That's amazing. I like the design here. There's lots of windows, fresh air. So while we're of course excited for the food, we are more excited for the dessert, especially the baklava. So we're gonna see how much uh, of that we'll be able to eat. We're looking at the menu and I'm excited for dessert. Um, but we ordered lunch first. I got the Ali Nazik, which is yogurt and it has kebab on top. And Eddie ordered a kebab with yogurt on the bottom. So it looks similar, but it tastes, it tastes different. We also got a lama june, which is similar to the wrap that we had uh, and I can already tell, as I mentioned earlier, there's a ton of desserts here, baklava, so Andrea's more excited about that than the actual food. Uh, but we're hungry, so hopefully it gets here soon. Because Gaziantep is the land of baklava, that's why I'm excited. How much? Look at this one. It's steaming. It's neat. Parsley, tomatoes, and green peppers. So there's no onion here. And this bread is so warm. A pocket of steam. It's hot. It didn't even fit on the plate, so I already cut it off. Again, I'm gonna put some parsley and some lemon juice. It is hot. and moist and tender. You can barely taste the meat, but the spices are there. It's good. This is a little bit thicker than I'm used to, but I really like it. 
ordered the Adunazi the base has yogurt and eggplant and uh, got a kebab on top. I've seen this cooked different ways, like sometimes it's just meat chopped off, but this is the first time I see it as a kebab. Mm, this is good. The meat is tender and juicy. There's not much seasoning on it, but it tastes very fresh. And I like the yogurt and um, eggplant mixed in there. This, I'm not happy about this. I think this is just oil, but it adds to the flavor, so I'm fine with it. Okay, and I got the Yoshlu kebab. It's essentially just a ton of yogurt, the kebab, and then the bread in the bottom. I think it'll be good. I think I've had this before, but let's see. Mm. It's good. I normally don't eat um, yogurt with all my meals, but with this one it's good because it gives a little more sour taste, which is good. I like it. And then of course the bread helps as well. So we're going to enjoy this meal because we're pretty hungry and then we'll catch you when we're getting some dessert. I ordered the carrot slice. It said to eat it upside down. Mm. This is really good because it has a lot of the layers of the phyllo dough. And look how juicy it is on the bottom. You can see that the middle has like a stuffing and it looks like, it tastes like cheese. And around it is the pistachios. And it's different from the traditional baklava that it has different layers. It only has like a few layers on the top to give it a cool effect. It tastes amazing. So we just finished at the restaurant and it was really good, especially the dessert. Now we're going to the Copper Bazaar. This place is huge and it has a ton of things, not only copper, it also has food and other different souvenirs. I got my first Turkish souvenir and it's a little shoe magnet, only two, two Turkish lira. So that's gonna be it for Gaziantep. We had a great time eating food and exploring. We'll see you next time.